Good morning and welcome to Saturday Sesh. My name is Trey Reckling. I'm with the Academy of Cannabis Science and uh, we're glad that you joined us today. We're going to be here talking to uh, students who are former students and currently enrolled students and um, a couple of friends of the Academy as well. So thank you for being here today. We have uh, today we will um, talk to special guest Kenji Hobbs. Kenji is the store manager at Dockside Soto in Seattle. And, um, and a little bit about Saturday Sesh. You know, we started this to have an opportunity to, to mix a little bit more with our students, to give our students an opportunity to come together, to get to know each other, because sometimes you get siloed into a classroom and don't get an opportunity to meet folks. So we think this is a good opportunity for some of you to do some mixing. Something. Uh, especially since right now we can't get out and, and do a whole lot of social networking. It's a good opportunity for like minds to come together, ask questions, share information. And, uh, but it's still kind of a fledgling effort. We're still working at this. And so thanks for your patience as we kind of get, uh, get our flow down. These are very casual conversations. We'll, um, we'll lead with some questions to our guest and then open the floor to everybody. So if you got some questions, don't worry, we will get to you just as much as possible. And, uh, and let's get started. Um, once again, my name is Trey Reckling with the Academy of Cannabis Science. The Academy is partnered exclusively with accredited universities and colleges like Seattle Central, uh, Seattle Central um, College, located in Capitol Hill, and UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, we're happy to work with as well. We have students representing from both places today, I believe. And, um, and then we'll also, we're going to be excited to, uh, to uh, announce a new partner on the East Coast, uh, a serious state, state school in a conservative area that we'll be really glad to have on board. We're not quite ready to announce that, but uh, we'll have some East Coasters as part of our bigger family here soon. So Kristen, hey, why don't you start us off and uh, introduce, just introduce yourself and then we'll do the rounds. Hi, I'm Kristen Baldwin, and I'm the Executive Director of the Cannabis Alliance, and I'm also a new student of Trey's Medical Marijuana Consultant class, so I'm very excited to be here. And thanks, and Chris is doing great work, and uh, the Cannabis Alliance we'll talk about a little bit later and um, give you an opportunity to plug that and talk about, you know, why that's, uh, it's, it's a great social opportunity and, and professional network, so. Definitely. James. Hi, my name is James Harmon. I'm a former and going to be again a student of Trey's. I look forward to signing up for his new class on Monday. Thanks, hey, sir. Welcome. Randy, how you doing? You're muted just at the moment. Oh, bottom left corner. Here you go. I'll, I think I got you. There we go. Bot can you hear me now? I can. Okay, sweet. There we go. Yeah, that's I uh, kind of got set up. I got a new puppy and I had to get her all situated, but she's all good now. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Randy Robinson. Um, new to this uh, program. Uh, I just was laid off from Expedia uh, last month <laughs> and uh, mm, my background is IT, but I was looking into this program way before then and I had, uh, I had st um, actually signed up for it last month. But um, like I said, I started in the middle, so they let me restart which okay. I'm starting on Monday and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think this is, well, I already know this is going to be my next phase in life. I just, uh, so I figured that I wanted to learn, you know, through your course and, you know, this could be my start and I'm looking forward, very forward to, to working with you and everyone else and learning the medical cannabis business. Fantastic. And where are you located and which school are you part? Are you uh, um, going through? I'm in, I'm in North Bend, Washington, which is right outside okay. of Seattle. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be going to Seattle Central. I already signed in Seattle. Excellent. Excellent. Welcome. And thank you. Let's go to Kelly. Kelly. Hey, Trey. I'm um, here. You might see a, a little guy joining me. Um, I, uh, so I was in your fall class in um, 2018 through UNLV, and I lived here in Las Vegas. I work in the um, wine uh, trade for Breakthrough Beverage. I'm still working, we're working remotely. However, um, I was just excited to kind of take an opportunity since I have a little extra time to um, just kind of reconnect with, with your, yourself and of course, refresh, you know, just stay connected. 
Fantastic. Yeah, glad to have you, Kelly. And, and, and those of you like Randy, Randy's got a puppy, Kelly, you might have some activity <laughs> in your house. Those uh, puppies and, and kids are, are welcome to join us. We'll try to keep the, the cussing to a minimum. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's. Uh, I just put her to sleep. Uh, she's over there. She's only. She's twelve weeks this week, and uh, oh, she's wow. a uh, Lahasa Atso and uh -huh. uh, Shih Tzu mix. Oh, very cool. Yeah, feel free to include them if they're cry. Our mine will cry at my feet sometimes. So, so. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Kelly, and welcome back. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let's go to Danielle. Danielle, I'm gonna unmute you, and you might have to do it on your end as well. Bought it. There you go. Hello. I am just here to learn um, whatever I can. I'm interested in, in becoming a 420 chef. Um, right now, I'm, I'm a fruit carver, but I definitely want to get into the this business. It's, it just seems like it's the time. Fantastic. Are you in Nevada as well? No, I am moving there as of May. Okay, great, great. And, and like Randy, um, like a lot of our students, who have looked to transition into this field, we remind people you don't have to be a grower. You don't have to, to do anything like that. And, and Randy's shaking his head, he knows better. Uh, bring, bring your talents and bring your experience to this industry. We probably need your infrastructure. Um, it's still a very, very fledgling industry. And, um, you know, it's, and, and in some cases we have people running businesses who have not run businesses before, and that's not mm -hmm. to demean them. People working really hard at it, um, but a lot of lessons to learn. And when you're a business owner, I can tell you myself, you at first feel like you have to do it all yourself, or maybe you, that's what you can afford. You can't have a HR team and a graphic design team and an IT team, but um, as things grow up, they certainly will need your skills and your guidance. So, so oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, please bring the skills you got. We, cannabis probably needs them. Marlon. Hello. Hello, Marlon. Can you hear me? There you go. Hello, how you doing? Good to it's see Marlon you. Marlon in Las Vegas, uh, Academy of Cannabis Science student. Uh, just looking forward to continuing my education and uh, hope you're all keeping well. Great, glad to have you. So it's nice to have uh, this mix, you know, before we didn't have this, where we kind of get to uh, cross pollinate, so to speak, about um, what we're doing, what we're learning, what questions that you have. And so, like I said, it's, it's exciting for us, too, because I always learn from these conversations. So uh, so let's get to our special guest. We have uh, I've known Kenji for for years now and have had the pleasure of working with him directly and indirectly working with some of his former employees and, um, and get them mixed with him at a variety of, of uh, cannabis events. And so really glad to have him and his expertise on board. Kenji is, like I said, the store manager at Dockside and Soto. Soto is uh, Seattle south of downtown. And uh, for a while was getting the nickname So Dope because some of the original licenses all went to Soto at one point. Looked like that was going to be ground zero for everything cannabis in Seattle for a minute. Um, but now we're, we're diversified and obviously all over, but Kenji's been in from, I think day one of legal cannabis and before. So, uh, in, in, in the medical world, but Kenji, tell us a little bit about you. You'll, you'll do it better justice. I'm Trey. I work at, um, I work at Dockside Soto. I've worked in the cannabis industry for a while. Um, I, I started, uh, working, um, in the medical market. I was a patient first. Um, and um, quickly um, just really grew, um, just really kind of almost entranced by the industry. I thought it was just, there was so much to learn. I felt that, um, you know, I was always someone that enjoyed cannabis, but I didn't really, um, you know, realize how much was out there. So since then, um, it's just been an educational journey and a professional journey for me. And uh, thankfully, I've had also the opportunity to meet a lot of great teachers and a lot of like-minded folks. I think cannabis brings a lot of people together with um, from different walks of life, but with similar philosophies. Um, so for me, that's been a really uh, enjoyable experience. And thankfully, um, I've been able to stay in the industry and continue working in it. Um, and, and I've worked for, you know, several different companies of different sizes and different backgrounds. My the medical shop I worked in was very small, but at my previous role uh, before Docs, it was, was almost the opposite. It was, it was very, very, um, you know, 
almost industrial, you could call it in that in that context. Mm -hmm. So um, Dockside is almost interesting where I work now is it's almost a medium between the two. So it's been a great journey and um, I'm really thankful to be here and, and, and talk with you folks. And and thanks for your experience and bringing, <clears throat> bringing that today here. Let's get to some questions, Kenji. Obviously, like uh, everybody's world is upside down. Good morning, David. Um, right. The world is kind of upside down now. But uh, talk to us a little bit about when did you all start feeling the impact of COVID or, or you know, this whole thing in the retail space? Um, it started probably, the conversation really picked up probably a month and a half ago. Obviously, right. we're medically endorsed store. Uh, a lot of people come in that are immunocompromised. Um, a lot of those folks don't exhibit, you know, symptoms like, um, you know, you might think. Um, so we want to make sure, you know, we go with the assumption that everybody is, could be potentially immunocompromised. So that's where the conversation started. So it started with basic sanitation and, and you know, we try to keep things clean in general, but just setting up a checklist and it was, came from mostly a cleanliness standpoint initially mm -hmm. um, and, and quickly evolved, you know, um, from there uh, into uh, mass purchasing um, and, and then, um, you know, even, you know, just even now we're reaching almost like a lull. Um, so it, it's been very wavy, um, but I think initially from the retail standpoint was um, the discussion started around cleanliness and, mm -hmm. and where we are now is, is almost like you'd see with the grocery store, something social distancing, uh, limiting the people in the store, no touch rule on some of the products and so on and so forth. Okay. And, and luckily Washington's already pretty low touch as far as products go. Cause a lot of stuff is behind the counter behind yep. glass. Yep. Uh, did the conversation start with your, um, your producers and processors. I, I, I know you're not a, you're not the ordering manager mm -hmm. or the supply side necessarily, but do you know um, how those mm -hmm. conversations started to change about them assuring you about you receiving clean product? It's a good, you know, it's interesting. Now we haven't seen the full brunt of that impact yet. I mm -hmm. suspect it's definitely coming. Um, mm -hmm. Dockside has a lot of, we have a vendor discounts. We sell a lot of local vendors that we work with um, come in and they're, capacity has definitely expanded. That right. being said, um, there are some partners that we have that are completely sold out of flour or other products. Um, and people have been mostly understanding of that, but a lot of larger sizes or products that people expect um, are uh, maybe not dwindling, but are definitely, we're seeing smaller amounts coming in. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if in the next month or so, the conversation will be drastically different. Um, right. Just on an aside with that, as, as I've heard, you know, just from conversations with our purchasing team is that um, the, one of the first casualties might be glass jars. A lot of glass jars are sourced oh. overseas. And what we're hearing right. from our partners is that um, glass jars will increasingly become um, in short supply in a way that's, you know, financially feasible. So you see customer behaviors, people that have, you know, in Washington State, when they're buying it prepackaged, um, they've gotten used to glass jars, you know, as part of the experience, um, it, you're going to see some right. differences there, and um, and you're just going to need some customer education to kind of mm -hmm. pad those um, expectations on our end. And, and you know the timing might be um, might be real interesting on that because you know the state just approved that we can go to, from four milliliter or four millimeter packaging thickness to two, two millimeter packaging yep. thickness, yep. and so uh, hopefully, you know maybe some of that intersection will be good. But, um, but yeah, absolutely, because we start seeing supply chains affected, you know, affected throughout. Um, we do know we've talked to some producers, some processors who are going out of their way, I know through the alliance as well, to assure their retail establishments of their clean practices behind the scenes. And right. then some, uh, some growers have even, they have contingency plans for total lockdown if necessary, where, you know, just a few people will sleep on site and not leave the facility. They've got food, they've got hot plates and things in place because when it comes to a garden, you can't walk away and, and lock the door. Right. Um, or else you start over and you're, you're, you know, then three months plus from having some product out on the shelf again. So that just, it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be an answer for our farmers. And so fortunately we're not in an outdoor growing season yet. But um, I know folks are already look into the challenges that might provide, especially if you have large farms in some, yep. you know, in some states. Absolutely. Yep. Could you, um, how about what are some of the um, early steps you all took in the store 
as far as um, notifying your, your guests how practice is going to be like, how, how are you conveying this to customers? How are you communicating this? That's a great question. So yeah, there was a good conversation about that. Obviously we have signage up in the store mm -hmm. um, and updating our website with some of the first um, steps that we took, but I think in, in cannabis in general, in Washington state, people have a sort of a fatigue around signs and regulatory um, signage in stores. They're almost so used to seeing, you know, there's multiple child warnings or rape warnings that there's a, there's sometimes there's people, um, you know, I am totally understand. They're just not interested in looking at a sign maybe. So mm -hmm. what we decided to do is maybe um, is, is the first step actually is, is to leverage kind of our marketing platforms towards that. Obviously we wanted to be sensitive to the situation. So sending out a bunch of um, text blasts, you know, with a, maybe a, you know, a tone that wasn't appropriate for the situation might not um, be the right move right now. So we decided let's instead um, use our text um, marketing to just discuss kind of some of the best practices. Um, some of those things would be obviously ordering online. Um, we also don't want to gatekeep people out. We realize that a lot of folks don't have cell phones um, or maybe they don't have the accessibility to a cell phone for various reasons. So um, that's something that's been in conversation because obviously we don't want to gate people, people out, but as the situation evolves, mm -hmm. that's something that we've had to discuss. Um, but, um, but really what we're trying to do is yeah, leveraging digital platforms is really the best one because especially when people come in a lot of times, even though our store is really clean and we're trying to make them feel comfortable, I can totally understand if someone feels freaked out, they're not looking at a sign, they're going in and right. out. Um, as quick as possible. So the messaging has really been around one, the cleanliness pro uh, processes that we're following and also mm -hmm. best practices. Um, obviously we want to give a full customer service experience to people, but we are asking people to limit transactions, ideally five minutes or less, not to say we're rushing people through, mm -hmm. but just to create an environment where um, like we are saying, immunocompromised or older folks or really anybody um, doesn't have to feel uncomfortable. And most people are really largely understanding of that. And it's also interesting as the weeks have gone by, um, the conversation has gotten easier because people are starting to yeah. get used to it in a way. Now, have you, have you seen an increase in people doing telephone orders, um, pick it up to go? Big time, big time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's by a, by a drastic number, um, just in general it's, and it's, it's good. You know, I think it's good. Um, obviously we want to sit and we want to show that show them the product and talk about it but th really this is the best solution for everybody and people right. understand the stakes are really high that mm -hmm. these are the steps we have to take to continue to operate and they also understand that the uh the health of our employees is also a major concern for us as well we want to make sure that people um feel comfortable so that's definitely part of that okay. conversation let's talk about health of employees have you had uh, have you all been fortunate enough to not have people sick with this or what you, have you um had to communicate some different things to your staff about early warning signs, removing yourself from the game and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Luckily I work for an organization, you know, like docs has a pretty, they are actually, I should say a very employee forward organization. There's a lot of companies that, you know, they, they had that philosophy on paper, but it may not be mm -hmm. operating in practice. I can say I feel very fortunate that the organization I work for, they've been very uh, transparent across the board. Uh, they made it clear that if anybody doesn't uh, want to work, uh, it feels uncomfortable. Um, they don't have to, and there's, they've offered equitable solutions um, for that, that people um, have been um, very receptive to. And also we've opened up um, lines of communication with, with daily phone calls and, and anonymous and also personal surveys to our staff to see what people are really thinking. So that's definitely been all part of the conversation. We are fortunate that we haven't had anybody sick uh, with, you know, um, coronavirus or COVID-19, but what we've, um, you know, we also, it's, it's sick season in general, it's allergy season too, mm -hmm. as well. So it's, it's trying to toe that line. What we're trying to do is really be as serious as possible. If we need mm -hmm. to reduce our hours, if you need to close for a day, because someone's not feeling under the weather, even if it's a cold, mm -hmm. I really feel that's the better, the better decision than chancing it and having one, somebody, the most, you know, the worst thing would be somebody getting sick. That's our customer mm -hmm. uh, or members of our staff getting sick or potentially, you know, contaminating the site, which would be, you know, another problem in right. itself. So we've been taking a pretty aggressive approach to it. I think it's the right approach. Obviously, you know, it means mm -hmm. we have to move quickly. Sometimes it can be stressful, but I work in an organization where it's, there's good communication. So these things are easily implement, uh, implemented and I haven't had any real snags um, other than, you know, what you'd expect from implementing things kind of on a daily basis. So it's been That's great. a good situation. 
for mm-hmm. us. Now I can't speak, you know, the industry has wildly different practices, uh, right. but I can see at its best, it's, it's working very well, at least in our case. Good. And that's great to hear. Cause yeah, we know absolutely some people, even on a good day are challenged in their workplace yep. because of, um, you know, uh, different reasons. Yeah. And, um, Talk to us, you know, not only did our governor, not only did Jay Inslee say cannabis shops um, can remain open and are essential, essential, but, uh, but we're going to allow curbside service. Have, have you all moved to curbside service? Because I'm sorry, I don't know that already. Have, and and <laughs> it's, There's a lot going on, so I don't blame you. Um, we, we're discussing that actually at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. Because our doors are still open and we're – like I said, we're discussing accessibility. Um, we do have curbside available for those that, that want it. They just need to call ahead. Really any okay. customer can call ahead and we will organize it in a way that's the most comfortable as long as it's within legal compliance. Right. Um, but um, we haven't moved exclusively to that model. We're not heavily promoting it just because mm-hmm. um, right now the with the online system that we have in place um, and just with the speed of service we're able to provide, um, it hasn't become an issue yet, but like I said, it's a day by day situation. Okay. So we'll okay. see how that goes. Great. And, and, yeah. and we hope, you know, that good things come of COVID and, and especially, you know, in our realm with cannabis that, that people realize, um, start to start to evaluate real risks and, yep. you know, be, be reasonable about the risk that cannabis, prov- you know, um, poses. And so we hope that the conversation around um, not just continuing curbside, but um, delivery at some point, yep. you know, could be available, you know, um, Nevada, Nevada, you guys already have delivery. Am I right? I'm sorry for not knowing that. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and so, uh, and so you're already ahead of the game and thanks Kelly. You already have ahead of the game and have infrastructure to support, you know, what could be, you know, the equivalent of like a Uber Eats here and people probably, you know, in those markets. And I know when I've been in, in California and, and um, Oregon and markets that oh, actually it was just Oregon markets that allowed it. People get over the, the fear thing real quickly and realize that it's not an ice cream man coming to deal weed to kids in the neighborhood. Right. And um, that it's a, you know, it's a safe, secure, and it, it's just as reasonable as any other delivery. So um, let's see. Oh, Kenji, let me ask you about uh, sales a little bit. I know we talked right before class started about um, you get in a rush when there might be a major announcement coming up from the governor. Yep. Have, you, have you continued to see spikes like that? Have things leveled off or people, do they seem like they're hoarding? It seems there's, yeah, the behaviors have changed pretty dramatically. Um, the beginning of March was interesting because it was really, it was hard to predict. We saw days of, of 25 or 30% increases in sales, and then very slow days back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, I think around the middle of the month when the conversation nationally just became a little bit more serious is when we started to see it really pick up. So actually really when it, co- what it really correlates with is a lot of the um, Costco, you know, style hoarding that you saw people when the right. whole, toilet paper kind of thing started it was it was really kind of the same thing where we saw um a lot of um really not only um stocking up behavior um but stocking up across categories a lot of people maxing out not only their edibles their oils their their bud um all of that and then also um multiple visits you know day by day seeing a lot of people come back the next day and the day after Mm -hmm. that um and, and just a lot of consumption in general outside of the hoarding I think a lot of people um, uh, this, in an anxiety ridden situation, um, you know, can, can use cannabis as, as, a, as a method to kind of bring down the um, kind of volume on, on things, especially right. in, a, in, a, in a time like that. So what we saw was a lot of folks um, stocking up and a lot of actually people purchasing kind of above, at least I'm speaking in terms of my regulars, uh, above the price range they typically like to. So a lot oh, of people okay. saying, this is an extraordinary um, circumstance. I'm going to kind of, go for whatever you're going to, you know, say is the best. So there was a lot of that, a lot of cashing in of loyalty points. Mm -hmm. So really kind of across the board, um, everything was, was turned up. Yeah. I I say good, not just because the bottom line, but because I'm glad people are treating themselves well. And I, I, like we've talked about before, you know, the concern for kids in a dangerous environment that that school is their normal reprieve and they can get out and get away from what might be a dangerous situation at home. 
Um, I always like to think that cannabis can can tone that down if if you know one of the parents is is abusive or yep. alcoholic that it could take the edge off of things at home a little bit. Um, Absolutely. That, Absolutely. Um, that's not speaking from statistics, but just a hope, I think. I, and um, it, you know, it might be anecdotal, but I think it's true. Personally, I think it's true from what I see yeah. and the, what people say. Um, I, and I've, uh, you know, I've, I know, can't tell you how many people I know that have gotten their parents uh, to try, you know, maybe a lower right. dose mint or something like that. Um, that, that a lot of times that's, that's a, it's a really, good thing for them because they don't have to have mm. another cocktail or something like that. It's, right. it's a new experience for them. That isn't intensely psychedelic, just more relaxing. Could I ask, I'm going to ask one more question. I'm going to turn it over to the floor. Um, how about types of products? Are you seeing a different range of buying? Do you see kind of consistently flour and, and concentrate or one or the other at the top or, or have you seen a difference in that kind of buying? The, the really, it's been mostly, um, the product I've seen, I'll start with the least growth and is probably dabs and concentrates, not in cartridges. I right. think that's just a kind of a different out. That's an outlier. I think in most cases, the dab community, I think has got its own kind of buying behaviors associated with it. Um, so that's, we've had good steady sales, but I wouldn't say I've seen that grow dramatically. What I have seen grow dramatically is, is definitely flower edibles big time for sure. I've mm -hmm. never seen so many orders where I've, I mean, it's the okay. staff will even remark um, on the size of these orders, just physically when we're filling right. these baskets, it's so apparent um, because people are, are um, it, it's interesting. People have obviously become a lot more aware of, of um, the laws in terms of possession. You know, they know right. because they're getting it on the dime. They're ordering, if they're ordering drinks, they're maxing out right on the ounce line. You know, right. they're, they're maxing everything out. So I'd say mostly edibles um, and, and pre-rolls too is a huge one. Okay. Pre-rolls is big. A lot of bulk pre-rolls. We pre-rolls. We were out of pre-roll packs for a couple of days, not because we weren't ordering them, simply because we couldn't even keep them in stock. It was wow. really, really crazy. And, uh, and another thing is papers too. That's another thing. A lot of people asking for wraps and okay. papers and tips. Our manufacturer or our, our supplier is sold out. It's 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 okay. um yeah. So a lot of people stocked up on papers. Lots of people. Wow. And, and I'm, I'm a home grower. So one of the things we looked at as, as, um, as this thing started, you know, I was lucky cause I was in my rotation, I had some getting ready to come down, I had some under my T5 lights getting ready to go into the closet. And so I'm, you know, I'm doing my math, counting jars and saying, Hey, you know, we usually go through this much cannabis in a month. How are we going to be? post cure and you know so we're smoking some stuff that's not cured or 21 days that we like uh so we're smoking some stuff that's a little early but um hopefully this will drive the conversation on home grow too because just like every a lot of people are growing victory gardens right now yep. um or whatever you call it um it, yep. it provides you know it provides a need especially um you know especially we know a lot more people then patients are using this for medical reasons. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So, Kenji, let's. Uh, I've hogged your. Uh, I've hogged <laughs> your ear to this point. Let's turn it over to the floor. What questions might y'all have for Kenji? Hey, Kenji. This is Randy from uh, Seattle. Well, <laughs> I live hey, in North Bend, so. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just I had a lot of questions or just you know uh, comments to make as far as you know since the COVID issue, mm -hmm. um, because. Um, I have been, you know, I do, you know, smoke and um, I do use cannabis. Uh, see, but I do a lot of the uh, research before I smoke it, right? I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I do a lot of research of, of which ones I think are better for me, do, you know, for my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and I think that when, with, especially with the COVID going on right now, and like you said, you see it in a lot of maybe kids and parents coming in and seeing what's best for them. And I think that's, you know, that's when it's, great when you have someone like when I, you know, for us to take this class, for us to know the different, you know, what, what works, you know, for different situations and, and different lifestyles. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and that's why I'm excited for this, uh, for this course, you know, cause I mean, I have so much right now mm -hmm. that I have just been just wanting to learn and, you know, and to uh, grow with. Um, and, and, and uh, like you said, I don't want to do the, I don't want to be just a grower. I want to be somewhere in the middle between the grower and the retailer. Right. Um, I just don't know where at yet. And right. I'm living in a great area, which I'm learning from here, the different 
cannabis stores that we have around here. I haven't been to your store yet, but I will now. Yeah, that, please come by. Yeah, that absolutely. I met you. Um, I usually go to a couple around here. And since the COVID issue, I've been getting a lot of texts, you know, saying, hey, uh, at this time, we're going to be serving, you know, we're going to open the store for just medical people. And then mm -hmm. after that, then, then like after nine o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning, we're opening up for recreation. Um, purposes or whatever right and um i'm seeing a lot of the uh like the call-in orders or online orders uh where one store particularly i went to last week um they allow like you only do online orders and they only allow two people in at a time yeah. right yeah. and um i thought that was great yeah. and they're also giving good sales as well right they're like you know i mean you're getting a you know some really good deals right now on some good you know product Absolutely. you know so and i try to stock up right because <laughs> right. if i go out to seattle i'm going to go stock up because you never know what's going to happen right Absolutely. but um you know and, and i just look forward to coming to your store and meeting you and you know and, yeah please and, do and, yeah uh, let me you know yeah for and sure. learning more and like i said um i have a lot of ideas right <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna be learning a lot more and i look forward to working with all you guys Absolutely, come by. Our whole staff's about all about education. So yeah, that, and that's what I'm about right now. I yeah. love the education part, right? It's just because I know what, what it's doing for me. Right. I mean, for, for, for my lifestyle, right? Yeah. And what it's doing. So I'm a big promoter in this, and this is where, you know, I'm excited. So. Awesome. And, man. and Randy, I'm sorry. Randy, we would recommend too that you check out a group. I, I, as far as I know, it's still in existence on Meetup. It's called Canna Tech. Canna Tech. Canna Tech, and okay. it's where technology meets cannabis, and these oh. it's just a social networking for people like you who have your okay. background and your skill set yeah. to say, hey, I want a job in this industry. I don't know what it is yet. Yeah. But like you heard Kenji mention earlier, they're really relying on the technology backbone oh, to do so much right now. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of need in our industry, mm -hmm. and so uh, not only to have those skills, but then to have some knowledge of cannabis and background and understanding oh, means – means a world of difference when you come in as a, as a job interviewee to yeah. be able to say, Hey, I've respected your industry enough to, to want to know more about Correct. it. Correct. So, so yeah, there's, but check out Canada tech meetup is, Canada is tech. Uh, where to find them. I think we will do. Thank you for Trey. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Who else has got a question for Kenji? You can, I have a yourself. question for Kenji. <laughs> Hello, Kenji. Hey. Uh, I'm just curious how you've noticed the difference between um, the people on the registry versus other. We know the registry is broken in the state of Washington. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to meet that need of the people that can't go on the registry, but yet need a medical product versus just a recreational or an adult use product? How do you, how would you help those people? It's yeah, so it's it's your it's a great question, you know, and it's definitely a legal um, fine line we have to walk because obviously we don't want to give you know advice that um, you know we're not doctors um, ultimately, um, but we want to make sure that people are being healthy and we can offer them um, that advice, especially um, because it, you're right, you're saying it's very tough um, to navigate the medical system. Um, a lot of people don't have access to the um, resources um, they need or they don't have the monetary, um, you know. Um, requirements to, to get these cards. So what we try to do is, especially in a time like this, because obviously a lot of people are coming in for something completely outside of recreational, is, is kind of using, um, really being careful with our language. Um, we can use terms like, um, uh, or euphemisms, or, or say things like therapeutic instead of curative. Um, and that way, um, we can kind of dance around that, that, kind, of, um, that kind of language, because it's tough. Um, the nice thing is, is, is a lot of the packaging um, allows a lot of the language that um, we have to be more cautious of in the store. So it's, it's kind of odd, but we can kind of point to packages that, that say sleep on it, but we can't say this will put you to sleep. Um, we can say this is very relaxing, good for nighttime, PM relief, things like that. They're not actually uh, espousing a curative property. So that way we can Kind of getting the same framework as our as our customers and they understand that too we can say usually i'll preface a conversation if somebody comes in and says hey i've got you know extreme pain or something and i need something that's going to fix it the first thing i'm going to tell them is you know i'm not a doctor i'm not going to be able to give you um uh, outside of a medical context um or a medical consultation i can't give you you know a claim to curative properties but they understand that and then we can have a very um 
frank discussion, just avoiding certain hot button words, if that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. I like avoiding the hot button words. <laughs> yeah. And then Kristen, also, I know even some consultants will make use of, um, of stories from other consumers, other patients, you know, where consultants will say, you know, I can't prove this will do anything mm -hmm. for you, but we have a number of customers who come in that use this for their rheumatoid arthritis, you know, that I've heard really good things from one particular person who this helped to sleep. You know, it's a case study of one, and I'm not promising that'll be this case for you, but kind of sharing those stories, that's why it's so critical that the, the, the customer comes back and tells the bud tender, the consultant, hey, that worked for me, or I got nothing out of that. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that that may be a thing that we need to work with on consumers to say it's okay to go back please, and, yeah. and share your experience because, frankly, there's no research. I mean, there's, there's very little research. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a there's more research on this plant than almost any plant in the world, um, but that's not enough for a lot of people, and it's not enough for us. Um, we need a lot more. There's there's obviously been a, a ban or a block on a lot of good federal double blind um, research. So, but the the thing we like to remind people though is is we have generations and generations of of case studies, and um, and we know you know we know people who have benefited, so we won't discount those uh, anecdotal stories either. Oh no, God no. Yeah, absolutely. James, what you got, man? Let me unmute you there. There you go. Hold on. There you go. Um, back, back to the anecdotal thing. Um, using other customers. Uh, stories, what have you, would you think it'd be appropriate to use your own personal reference? Like, I love Flow. That product is the best thing. It gets down in the bone, kind of hurt. I have fused wrist, metal plate, all kinds of other stuff. Do you think it's appropriate to use your own stories? I, I in, in practice, um, I got to say, I do it. I do it probably every day, actually. Yeah, I got to say, because um, like I said, I'll, it, it's like Trey said, it's, um, it's not necessarily a claim to anything curative. Um, but like I said, I love flow and I'll tell people, mm. Hey, I have a very, I, I have bad posture when I look at my phone, you know, like many people do. So I get a stiff neck and I tell them this, this is a great product. Um, I have, there's a tincture that Fairwinds makes. That's a, a high CBG oh. tincture. I use that every single morning. And what I tell people is like, this is a great product. I like to start my day with this. this is a gr I feel really good when I start my day with this. And saying something I feel really good is, is completely um, open for interpretation. So, and I think um, many times people are, are very um, intuitive and they can pick up on kind of what we're putting down when it comes to that. So, and obviously, you know, personal experiences is definitely one of the most potent um, ways to sell, um, especially in, in our context. We're, we're trying to sell people stuff that actually works. We're not trying to if, if something doesn't fit our criteria, we don't want it on our shelves anyway. So um, I really believe in the products I sell. And that's, I think, yeah, it's a great way to do so as long as um, we, you know, take into consideration just a few of those hot button words. But as long as we talk anecdotally, it's, it's a very potent way to sell. I think so. Yeah. The way I talk about flow to people, my wife says I should be a salesman for Fairwinds. <laughs> I love no, I, their I, product. I, I, <laughs> Right. And I think people pick up on it when you, I think mm -hmm. uh, it's, I think we've all been in a situation where a salesperson is clearly selling you something they don't believe in. And then there's also situations where even if someone's maybe not the best salesperson, you can tell they've actually benefited, benefited from a product or maybe they, they care about a product. It's, it's very hard to disguise, I think. So I totally agree. With you. Like Fairwind's companion stuff yeah. for pets. Yeah. I believe in that. We have a Bengal cat that gets yeah. really excited. We give her some of it. Yeah. Absolutely. We call it bacon. It's bacon flavors. Like, bacon. Very it's time for bacon. I, I, I love it. You know what's you know what's an interesting thing about um I'm glad you brought up the companion tincture, talking about curative properties and things like that. Because the companion tincture, now it does have a picture of, of a dog and a cat on it. I, I do uh, believe that's the last time I saw the, the packaging. But interestingly enough, you can't actually sell something in a recreational store that's explicitly mm -hmm. for um, an animal of any context. Right. So that is actually um Funnily enough, is, is um, even when I sell that product, I, I have to stop myself from saying, hey, give this to blank. Right. And I'll say, you know, look at this package and I, you, this is a great product. And, and then people immediately kind of say, 
I see what's going on here. You know, like I know what's going on here. So, and then if, if ever it does get uncomfortable where someone's really just wants you to say, Hey, give the, can I give this to my blank, my cat or my dog? Um, there's always a way I think to infer the, um, the proper usage without actually saying, uh, I can't explicitly say that if that makes sense. And, and they're a great company. I'll back you guys on that. The, uh, oh, yeah. we've, we've used their product. I actually saw somebody do a presentation where they said they intended to sell the product by referring to animals as little people I'm like, or, or tiny, the tiny people in our lives. I'm yep. like, no, we can't. No, that's <laughs> not the way to go about this. But, but because the AVMA is not behind this yet and, um, and, and some license licenses would be in jeopardy if people started crossing that line, we have to yep. Yeah. provide help without crossing that line too. So I'm glad to know that's not a tiger and you're not the next tiger King. Uh, no, you said a bangle. This is my tabby bangle. Yachty. Okay. Special kitty. She's calm right now. She was asleep, but she literally will bounce off walls. I didn't know that type of cat. When you said bingle, all I could think was <clears throat> the cat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, she's a special one. That's cool. Yeah, we and we had a senior dog who had a stroke, um, and and some of you who know me might know this story. But we, she had a, a major stroke. I thought she had gotten into our concentrates, and she couldn't stand up, and she was being on herself. And her eyes, her eyes were doing this crazy thing; they couldn't lock. And and the vet said, "No, she's had a major stroke, and her brain is swollen." And that, these are all symptoms of a swollen brain. And so uh, the vet, fortunately, he said, you know, I'm not allowed to prescribe anything to you. I can't even really advise you. But he said, I know what industry you're in because we had talked about it. And he said, you might have something better than I do for this. He said, I can't even tell you how to dose it, but you're not going to hurt her. He said, we got to save her. And we saved her life. She lived another year and a half with no noticeable brain damage. And that's from <sighs> full full tincture, I mean, a full plant um uh, extract and, and she got too high and, and was uncomfortable, but she lived. So we, we try to tell, we meet people with senior animals all the time. We're like, please consider CBD with a little bit of THC in it, a, a product like that, you know, Randy, did you have, I saw you, um, clap. Did you have a point or a, yeah, I had another, uh, question to Kenji about the, uh, um, th for, for delivery, I'm, um, for delivery service, I heard that, uh, Vegas got it, but is does Washington State have for delivery service yet for the it, cannabis? No, it doesn't. And you're right; many other states do. Um, I really think that, um, like Trey was saying, that that should be part of the conversation, especially now when we're talking about accessibility, because it's yeah. makes it very hard for people. We have people that come from from a very long distance for their yeah. medicine. Yeah, and um, it, it honestly, it's it's hard to watch sometimes because it's it's really tough for them, and it would be solved so much easier if we had some sort of um, ability to work with delivery partners. But um, even in the, um, in the medical market, those delivery services um, were operating under um, kind of legal gray areas, which kind of allowed them, they were basically charging for the delivery fee for the donation of the cannabis. So that was actually oh, legally wow. sound, um, yeah. but it also was in a gray area. So that's yeah. really why those services existed then and why they don't exist now. I really strongly believe they should be. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I kind of get it too. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of a security threat too. I mean, it's, it's all kinds of stuff that goes with that, you know, sure, especially sure. with cannabis and the way right. people relate to it. But it's just, you know, it's interesting to me. And yeah. to and to James, for you, your question, I mean, to Kenji, and was about using our own experience. Um, I think me personally, using my own personal experience, um, like I said, I, I, I. I use, I read about the different uh, sativas and the indicas that I, or hybrids or whatever I use for the day uh, for my lifestyle. And for me working out, I find that a um, a good sativa is great mm -hmm. for me, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it gives me a, some energy, you know, yep. and it keeps me focused, right? So this is all in my plan, right? That's why I say I don't know where yeah. I want to go with this, but I'm going to go somewhere with it. Right. I have my stories to reflect on that. And I think Absolutely. that would be a great thing to have your own personal stories for this, because that's going to help, you know, because I have people contacting me like, hey, which ones do you use? I'm like, I say which ones I use, but it might not be good for them. Right. right. So that's why I'm in this business. I want to learn more because I see so much 
Yep. You know, I see so much. It's, it's like incredible, right? Absolutely. <laughs> like, You're right. Anybody that calling. says I'm they serious, know. I'm man. It, it that, really nobody is. Nobody knows everything. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's so much to learn, which yeah. is really nice about it. You know, keep so it, it, that's the great thing. Is, yeah. oh, please, go ahead. Journal, oh, use. I do. I yeah. keep a journal. I keep all of it. I do. Good. I keep. That's I'm smart. serious, man. I just... That's smart. <laughs> yeah. And Kenji, let me ask uh, here. Hold on. Let me change the background here just for a second because I want to ask: Is anybody um are stu- um and this is off the COVID subject? But are people using the new, you know, Leafly's got a, uh, a new way to denote its strains and, and that sort of thing um, where they have, instead of just being three tiles, indica, sativa, and hybrid, now they have these flowers that are, uh, and I'm going to pull one up here. Sorry, because I just thought about this. But um, do you have people that are using these new flowers to try to, to really, um, as we're talking about finding what works for you, Yep. Leafly's introduced this new program. I don't know if y'all have seen it, but these are, um, instead of just having the three tiles, each one of these are, um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> James is on it. So if, if you're trying to dial in, and this might be another useful tool, James is on it. Randy, are you already aware? Okay. Yep, I'm aware. Yep. Okay. So it's just, it's just a cool, and Kenji, I don't know how much this is, um, I know probably store to store it changes and how much a Leafly Leafly is part of that business's model mm-hmm. and, and relationship might change it too. Do you people find people coming in to use this to try to dial in their choices? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. And, and also just the conversation has gotten so much more sophisticated in the last two years mm-hmm. from cannabis. One thing I've seen, it still remains, but you know, things like a THC numbers have become far less of a concern um, mm-hmm. than you saw the last couple of years. People are starting to understand the process behind that. Um, and people also are starting to understand that the different, you know, I understand sativa, indica, hybrid. When I first was being introduced to cannabis, it was a great way for me to understand as an entry point um, the nuances. But I've smoked sativas, you know, that that have provided, you know, a completely opposite of effect of, of mm-hmm. what I expected. Um, there's there's a lot of um, very legacy indica strains that I would consider really psychedelic and cerebral. I think Northern Lights is a great example of that. Um, so I think this is good because it's going to help people understand it's really a good thing that there's not just three types. There's, there's 10,000 different effects you can mm-hmm. get from cannabis or more and counting, you know, flavors, whatever. It's, it's one of the most bio, um, the biomorphism of cannabis is so incredible. So I think this is just the beginning and this is the, mm-hmm. this is just a great first step. I can only imagine a hundred years how people are going to be discussing cannabis. It'll sound like yeah, a right. language, I think to me. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. A hundred like years from now, new- who knows? <laughs> I like some of the new labels that are coming out on the packaging that gives all the terps and mm-hmm. print out. That is really helpful mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. has helped me choose some of the better strains because yep. I mm-hmm. deal with a lot of pain issues. Yeah, my wife has that anxiety stuff, mm-hmm. and dialing that in with those mm-hmm. and helping with the flavors too. I mean, yeah, yeah, the sophistication of it is is beautiful. Yep. It takes a little bit to wrap your head around, yeah. but it's great. I love it. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. It's like apples at the store. You know, there's there's a million varieties that you can. They're all so unique. You know, mm-hmm. so I think it's um I think it's really special too. And it's, it's I like coffee too. I feel like there's a lot of correlations between those kind of worlds. So it's it's that's the nice thing is there's an infinite world out there. And there's and to your point is that um you know it's it, the flavors, the effects. I think um companies that do offer that information on their packaging. Have seen uh, do see tangible increases in their sales that are worth the cost of it, um, and people that are willing to double down on kind of um, you know breaking that kind of um, sativa indica hybrid kind of uh, framework that we've we've kind of gotten used to have, have done really well. We carry pearl extracts. They're a CO two company. Do cartridges in Washington State. Um, what I like about them is some of their indica cartridges. They have a flavor and a, an effect profile, and many times they have indicas that'll say. Um, very cerebral will keep you up you know they'll they'll they're willing to mm-hmm. say yes this is an indica but this is not going to give you the effect that you might have thought and they also have sativas that say you know stony hazy or or disassociative you know they're basically mm-hmm. trying to tell people um look at what we're offering that's the, the strain sounds great and it does say sativa but there's far more to that and that when we're selling to people that helps um you know build some trust um yeah. outside of our basic conversation and, and I think there's 
I'm sorry. I, I think those brands that are doing that are are smart because not every, as you know, not every consumer is going to do what Randy's doing and take the time to have a, a journal and to say, look, I'm trying this and to be really scientific about it. And James, I know you, you've experimented as well and, and, and are interested in dialing it down, but not everybody's got that level of commitment to it. And so for a brand to say, Hey, look, we know you're shopping by a lot of people are used to shopping by um, desired outcome. And so we're going to make it easy and we're going to call our product calm or serene or uh, get out there or whatever it is. And so it, it and, and Randy, you know, I'm not picking on your word choice here. That's, that's a it's standard word choice in our industry. And, um, and obviously, you know, there's a lot more to it if you're, if you're keeping records, but, um, but just a nod, a nod to that, that that's something that we're, we're challenged with here on, on a daily is, is how do we talk about this without, speaking in paragraphs when we can speak in sentences, right? And so we're hoping tools like this will help folks to, to narrow this, um, narrow it down. And there are also online dosing calculators you can use if y'all are aware of. Um, uh, strain print is one, I think, strain print. And then there's a there's one Canadian company, there's an American company, both doing kind of the same thing. Um, it's a free app. You can go through the Canadian one. It matches up with the products in the Canadian market. And so you'll say, hey, I picked this brand, Scentsy Star from this farm. I used this much. And then it's going to ask you to track the effects. And so, and it'll even send you a reminder, which is helpful a lot of times. They're like five minutes later, hey, did you forget to enter your effects? And so you can actually track it on your phone and say, hey, you know, the last time I used Scentsy Star, I got really wigged out. I got too anxious. I felt uncomfortable. And that's the case for me. You know, there's just a couple strains that are just too much. I don't know if it's the limonene or what, but, um, but yeah, so keep an eye out for those strain print. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a hard time coming up with the other. Um, if you search and see that those are only Canadian companies, you can still, as I recall, enter a product that's not on their list and start to create your own profile. Uh, now the, the flip for this is they're collecting all your data. So if you're protective of that and you don't want anybody to know what you're using, how much you're using or the effect, then I will caution you. Otherwise, I mean, that's their play. That's why it's a free app because then they can turn and say, Hey, we've got 40,000 data points for cannabis use and we're going to sell this to formulators, right? Or we're going to sell it back to the company so they can say 85% of the people who use this product said it was good for their headache. So, but I, to me as a consumer, it's a useful tool as it's easier. I was, I was keeping notes on a piece of paper and I was, I was just losing track, you know, so. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Cause I mean, you just said that it's like, I don't want all my information out there. Maybe I can work with somebody that I, cause I know a lot of people in the IT that I can, you know, track it. We can create our own app. Right. Right. Cause that's valuable information. And they promise that the, your information is never tied to your name, but we know how promises go in the world of, of tech and, you know, um, in the world of anything, pre-tech, you know, a promise is a promise and, and it's only as good as the protocols for safety and, and the good security around it. So, um, so anyway, those are, those are tools that are out there too. Kristen, um, thanks for being on the call today. Not everybody knows about the Cannabis Alliance and usually I will plug it because I'm part of it and because it's become a family to me and, and provided all kind of benefit to me personally in our academy. Could you talk a little bit about what it is, what you do and when you meet? Uh, the Cannabis Alliance is a trade association for cannabis and it's not just growers or producers or ancillary businesses. It includes bud tenders and why is my phone bugging me? Um, <clears throat> so it, it, is a, it really is an alliance of the cannabis community in Washington State. Um, we, we meet once a month, second Thursday of the month. We've opened it up to the general population because during the times of all of this horridness, um, having that information available to the community is probably more important than even just restricting it to our membership. Our next meeting is uh, this Thursday. Trey is my technical director and, and general um, loveliness. Uh, and you're going to throw that up there, aren't you, Trey? Yeah, oh, there, yeah. 
And if you go to the events, you'll see the event. We also have a virtual happy hour every Tuesday while we're going through this lovely crisis because a lot of people just need a little bit of time to smoke a bowl and ask questions and and lean in. And so that's also on our events page. And I highly recommend you go in and join us on Tuesday. And my office stinks of pot afterwards, but it's worth it. Um, and uh, it's, it's a great way to ask questions and meet people in the industry. And when this is all over, um, we, we will have our regular meetings where we meet in, meet in together at the Wood Technology Center. Um, and that is in central Washington, uh, central Seattle, central Washington. Boy, we're always all going to go to Ellensburg. No, we're it's in central <laughs> Seattle and it's at the Seattle Central Wood Technology Center on, is it 23rd, Trey? I just obey we're, my GPS. Uh, on, on Lane Street, which is just north of Jimi Hendrix Park, if you know where Jimi Hendrix Park is, part of the African American Museum of yeah. the Pacific Northwest, just up the street, maybe four or five blocks. I don't know how many blocks, about a quarter mile up from that. So uh, it's a great place. It's, it's the Furniture Design Building. Kristen is our executive director. Um, it's, it's a combination of several professional organizations that existed. That's why it's an alliance. And I'll tell you, they've always made me feel at home. They uh, help me to know other people in the industry. It's nice to know other people struggle with the same questions that you do. And, and you should never feel like you're out there by yourself. So whether or not, I know some of you are on the call from Nevada. You don't have to live in Washington to be nope. part of these meetings. I think that you'll find value and, and we, we feel like at the Academy, part of what we can do is help people connect, not just educate people. Cause that's a large part of your education too, is, is knowing the people who are doing this. Um, you know, I can speak for, for most of the people on this call. I know many, you know, many of you personally, and it's just, it's nice to know good people. Right. And so we're glad to be associated with you all to be associated with, um, with the Alliance. I do want to uh, put in a couple plugs. Our next Saturday sesh in two weeks, we're going to have Dr. Richard Halliburton from Greenleaf Wellness in Fremont. It's also a, a Washington company. Um, Dr. Halliburton writes medical authorizations for patients. So he's going to talk to us about the process of becoming a patient. Uh, some of the things that he wished more people knew about that process some um, misunderstandings and, and things that he wish more patients understood. And then we're going to also ask him some of our COVID questions too about staying safe and that sort of thing. Um, so we'll welcome him up. It'll be a nice part two kind of of, of uh, cannabis in the age of COVID. Kenji, we want to thank you so much for being here today. This, Kenji you. volunteered to be with us today. He's been working long, hard hours at his <laughs> store, and he spent some of his time off with us today to do this, and really, really grateful to him for doing this. Thank you. No thank problem, you. Trey. <laughs> Education's key, so I'm always happy to be out here, and I've, I've really just been privileged to be able to get this knowledge, so it's really my duty to share it with everyone else. I will tell you, Kenji, Talkside is my store. Thank you. Thank you. I, I love working there. I honestly do. Um, and uh, it's a great company. I'm glad I'm, I'm with them. I'll be coming here to visit. Yeah, yeah, please do. Please do. I'm there quite frequently. So you'll find me. <laughs> right. I'll be coming up to visit you as well. Oh, awesome. Thank Auburn, you. Appreciate that. Man. I'll make the trip. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I just put up uh, two links. We are in session for well, about to be in session for Seattle Central. We just began at UNLV. Uh, so put up the links for classes at both of those institutions just as soon as we hear from our partner, our new partner in South Carolina. We know that's a, that process is a bit delayed with everything going on, but we'll be happy to announce them as part of our bigger family. Um, they are in South Carolina, I'll tell you that much. And so, uh, so we'll be happy to welcome them and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll spread some truth even where Lindsey Graham lives. <laughs> we're happy to do that um thank you all very much for being here today let me see if we had any more housekeeping stuff i think that's it we do saturday sesh on the first and third is that right yeah the first and third saturday of every month this is a new incarnation if you have ideas of who you think we should bring in let me know um i'm always available to you at my email and that's trey reckling at gmail.com. I have another one, but I'll tell you, that's just, 
that's just the one that that I'm gonna check most. And so that's, whoops. Anyway, I'm gonna do that again. Trayrequing at gmail.com. We encourage you to reach out. If you have any questions at all, Mary White, I know you're joining us late, but that's Mary White who has joined us for a past Saturday sesh. And uh, Mary is a cannabis cook extraordinary and extraordinaire. She is uh, author of two cooking with cannabis books, one specifically about CBD. And she regularly teaches cooking with cannabis classes here in her home in West Seattle, correct? Yes, sir. And I know I'm late, you guys, but Trey is surrounded by a galaxy of terpenes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so handsome. Oh, <laughs> man, not feeling it today. About. Thank you. Thank you. You're so nice. Um, <laughs> but thank you all very much. Hey, last lesson of the day. Did you know? You might be in a trivia. You might be in a trivia session that has this later somewhere. Who knows? But that is uh, called the Asanoha, and this is the Japanese symbol that uh, symbolizes hemp, and it's become a, a, a classic and traditional uh, shape on uh, or print on kimonos. But you'll also see this on all kind of stuff. Now that you know what it is, or maybe you already did, um, it's like seeing a VW Bug and all of a sudden seeing them everywhere. Notice this pattern everywhere, uh, but uh, that is symbolic of hemp. And even though Japan, Japan is behind us on on bringing this back, um, their history on 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 hemp is is a lot longer than that in North America. So we'll hope they'll come online soon. That's right. Yeah. Thank you all very much for your time today. We hope to see you in class or out there at the next Cannabis Alliance meeting Thursday or the next Happy Hour on Tuesday, all that inform information is on the Cannabis Alliance page on your right. Thank you all. Thank you, Kenji. Y'all have a great Bye, day. Bye, guys. Have a good one. See you. Happy Saturday. Bye. Bye. Have a great Saturday.